Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome it's to so Global Fire to... Alliance. Woo! Catch the wave. Woo! Come on, catch the wave of revival. Come on, I've got about... my t-shirt on. Catch the wave. Come on. We are all about, you know, developing, cultivating a revivolution. And yeah. we want you to be part of it with us. We're going to have oh. so much fun today. Uh, we are, you know, just we're, we're cultivating a catalytic, creative community without walls. And we're glad you're joining us today. We're going to have a great time today talking about the presence of God and the power that comes from the presence of God, specifically as it relates to the joy of the Lord. <laughs> and it's going to be fun. We we love seeing where, where you're from, too. We know that the wave of revival touches every single place around the planet. So put your name in, where you're from, and how has joy changed your life? Let's have that be a conversational piece right now. How does joy change your life and what that's all about? We're going to go after healing too. So if you need physical healing, put that in the chat as well. We just want to see God's love and his joy hit so many people today. And there are coaches there that are going to be chatting too. And so if you have any ideas, put that in the chat and the coaches will encourage you to. Amen. Well, hey, joy is such an important theme of scripture. It's such an important core value of the kingdom of God. In fact, oh, in Psalm 2, 4, we're told that he who is enthroned in the heavens laughs, continually laughs, like in his presence is fullness of joy, Psalm 16, 11. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom of God, there resides righteousness, which is making wrong ways right, peace, which is aligning heaven to earth, and joy is the result of when God does a miracle and makes wrong ways right, and aligns heaven to earth, we have joy. Joy is the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Jesus, in fact, in, in John chapter 15, he's praying, or 17, I, I, I should say, John 17, he's praying for his disciples, and he's praying seven things there. I won't go over all the seven things, but it's about the glory, experiencing his love, experiencing his presence. For this reason, that we would have a full measure of his joy in us, and a full measure is running over, spilling out like rivers of joy, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit in us and through us. I mean, we're coming up to the day of Pentecost yeah, tomorrow. And the day of Pentecost is all about the Holy Spirit coming on the church, filling the, 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 the disciples and the 120 in the upper room. And the Bible tells us that they were so filled that everybody around thought they were drunk. They weren't drunk on wine, as you suppose, but they were drunk on the Holy Spirit. Like in Ephesians 5, where Paul says, don't be drunk with wine of the world, but rather be drunk with the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit. And so we're going to release that on you today. Ooh, Kevin, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about what you're talking about. I don't know about you, but I didn't, I wasn't raised in a culture where joy with God was celebrated. I, I felt like I had to work to make sure that he was happy with me, but there was always more that I could be doing. So I never associated joy with strength or with God. And then this wave happened and I started to get filled up, drunk with the Holy Spirit. I started to see more healings happen, more things just change. So it's crazy. And and hun, we have some amazing people joining us. Jacqueline is joining us. Of course us. we do. I know. It's so great. Tina's joining us from Colorado. Woo! It's so great. I, Irene Archer, welcome back. Joy. Um, she says the joy of the Lord is her strength. I love that. Uh, Tanya from Colorado. Woo, Tanya. Tanya and Dan, love you guys so much. So glad you're back. Sarah uh, Thornburg says, joy reminds me that I have authority to overcome my circumstances. Come on. Wow, what a great truth. Um, Sarah says, joy reminds her that she has the authority to go through and to overcome circumstances that remind her that Jesus laughs at the enemy. Come on. I Come love on. It. 
Lisa Henderson is joining. Uh, oh my gosh, it's the boat that keeps her keeps her afloat. Joy, I love this, you guys. Thanks for thanks for sharing. I love your heart. It's good for us to get to know you. And in small groups, after this, there's um there's a there's a link that we'll send you so that you can grow in that. If you haven't yet found that, we'll get that to you. That's right. So our Facebook Live portion, which is only half an hour, is followed by an hour of our zoom community link and so we want you to join our community global fire alliance in fact if you don't know much about global fire alliance go to globalfirealliance.org and that's our website and you can also follow us on our global fire alliance facebook page but uh check out our website and just see what we're about doing and and we want to develop a community with you we want to create a church expression without walls. We don't want to be confined in the building. We want to start in the building, but then we want to go out. We want to reach out in our daily lives. We want to reach out as a community. And, and we want to connect you with people in your region that you can even connect with to, to go out and do some things to expand the yeah. kingdom of God. So we're talking about joy this morning, talking Woo! about the power of joy, the power of his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. So that means his presence is joy filled. <laughs> Woo! But yes. you know, Teresa, you mentioned something just a second ago, and that is you weren't raised in a Christian community that really valued joy. And most of us, I think, have probably experienced the same thing because joy is seen as something that's reserved for just going to heaven. Like yes. Augustine in the fourth century, actually, you know, he was a Gnostic actually and, and synthesized Gnosticism with Christianity and had this idea that man is completely evil, could never be fully redeemed in his flesh and his soul and his emotions. And therefore man is completely depraved and always will be until he escapes this body, this earth that's evil and goes to a place called heaven. And then you can experience all of those wonderful benefits of the kingdom of God once you get there. And so the church since the fourth century has taught that joy is reserved for when we go to heaven after we die. But Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within us. Yes. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here right now. And we get to experience heaven on earth. Jesus taught us to pray. You know, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're not waiting to go to heaven to experience his presence. We have his presence right now. And, and so now is the time to experience joy. But most of the church has taught this premillennial, dispensational, cessationistic eschatology, which teaches you that you have to wait for the millennium to come where we get to leave this earth and go to heaven. Now, of course, I'm longing for Jesus to come back and I'm longing for that fulfillment time. But until then, I still get heaven now. I get it now and I get it then. And so it's like a good buffet. I get to keep going back and I get more. I know, hon. And, and Kevin, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's a continual feast. It's not just we we were filled with the Holy Spirit and then that was it, but it's a continual feast every day that he wants to give us. There's there's something that I love about that scripture that talks about that Jesus in Hebrews was anointed with joy above his companions. And Jesus is perfect theology. And he knew what was happening. He knew where he was going. He knew the cross, but it says that the joy was his empowerment. The joy is what kept him going. It kept him in relationship with the father. And guys, I believe that you all are here because God wants to infect you with a joy that is going to transform every area of your life. Joy just isn't when you're with Jesus. Joy is when you're going through a hard time. Like Sarah, you talked about joy is in every situation. Joy can come in with Paul and Silas while they're in prison and the doors fly open because they're singing songs of praise and joy. It's, it's like that thing where we have access to heaven through joy. We have fact, access to, to like um, healing. Go ahead, hon. In fact, the Apostle Paul instructs us to be joyful every once in a while. No, <laughs> no, always. Why? Yes. Because there's power in joy. 
There's power in thanksgiving. That's why we're to give thanks in everything, you know, because there's power in joy. There's power in thanksgiving. But we're focusing on joy this morning. I, I love uh, the uh, the book of Nehemiah when, you know, the children of Israel came back to Jerusalem, the promised land, after they had been enslaved in bondage for 70 years because they had rebelled against God. And God's patience is, is, is long lasting. But at some point, he's like, okay, I, I need, we need to go to the next level here to get your attention. And so Israel was in bondage in Babylon for 70 years. And when God delivered them and they came back to Jerusalem, Nehemiah chapter eight, they find the book of the law that they had neglected reading for those 70 years or more. And so they're reading it. And as they're reading the scriptures all day long, the people are weeping, they're, they're mourning, and they're repenting all over again. And three times there, Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter eight, Nehemiah and the Levites and the priests, they all were like, stop it, stop it, quit mourning, quit grieving, quit repenting all over again. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your empowerment. Strength, actually, in the Hebrew is empowerment. It's, it's the power that, that we live the Christian life from. It's the power that the Christian life flows through us to other people to bring breakthrough. It's joy that is the, the, the power of the kingdom of God. It's not mourning or weeping. In fact, when Jesus yeah. went to go raise the, the girl from the dead, he asked the mourners to go step aside out you know, away from where he was bringing in faith, because joy is the is like the expression of faith. When we have faith, we're like, <laughs> nothing can hurt me. It's like David, when he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death in Psalm 23, he says, I won't fear any evil. Why? Because you've already set up a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, when two armies would come on the battlefield in those times, the winner of the battle would take the enemy's spoils, set up tables, picnic tables on the battlefield, and eat and drink and be merry, celebrating the victory. And so what David is saying is, you already, you already won the battle. I can celebrate in advance of what your power has accomplished, so I can be happy. I can celebrate with great joy right now. In fact, in Nehemiah, it says, celebrate with choice food and sweet drink. And then the people finally understood the words of the Lord and they went out and celebrated. And then uh, let me just finish with just with one thing. Psalm 126 is the psalm that was written in correlation to Nehemiah chapter eight. And in Psalm 126, it says this, when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter. <laughs> and our tongues with songs of joy. And then it was said among the nations, look at what the Lord has done for them. And we want it too, and now we receive joy. I'm telling you, the world is waiting to see our joy on. They're waiting to see happy Christians who are empowered by the presence of God. So we release that on you today. <laughs> Ooh, that is so good, guys. Study those scriptures, coaches. Put those scriptures in, Nehemiah 8. Psalm 126, so important that we, we, we steward this word and we're going to be releasing this in your groups as well coming up. We have some amazing people that are sharing in here, Kevin. I love this. We love it when you share. Um, it's so cool. It's uh, again, Carol Joy says joy in the Lord is the strength of her heart. She's seen her heart get transformed. Jacqueline said, God's not mad at you. Oh, come on. That is such a good revelation. She also said joy is a lifestyle because he's part of us. Oh, I love it. Oh, and Emily Chow. Emily, welcome. Emily, so glad you're with us. She's from um, the Pasadena area. You know, part of part of what we're talking about, which Kevin is talking about, is, is there's a move of God that is full of joy, that is so contagious, that is something that has to be released upon the earth because as our coaches and I were, we were, and Kevin, we were talking, we we're talking about how much there's depression, how much fear is in our culture. And it's because they don't know where joy is found. They don't know that joy can release them from a spirit of fear, a spirit of, of despair. And that's what I love about the scripture that 
that their mouths were full of joy. Guys, we, we all know that the Lord wants to bring back identity in our culture into who we are, how God originally designed us. And so the more that we have joy in the presence, the more they're going to be attracted and God is attracted to that. And they'll want what we have because everybody wants to have joy. I mean, that's the, that's the power of his presence. That's the wave that comes upon us that keeps us filled of the Holy Spirit. There's yeah, something so that, that he's doing right now in your life. I can feel it. So take a hold of that. There's hope because there's joy in his presence. Go ahead, hon. Well, I mean, the other thing that we've learned in church is that joy is separate from laughter. Yes. And people teach that and it's wrong. Like, and that's what Psalm 26 describes that our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy, which describes the joy of the Lord is our empowerment. Yeah. And laughter and joy are connected together just as mourning and weeping are connected together. And so, you know, it's important for us to understand that we're not experiencing joy. We're experiencing <laughs> joy, you know, like with laughter and an expression. In fact, Jesus promised in, in Luke chapter six, verse 19 or 21, I think it's uh, Luke 6, 21. Happy are those who weep now before they encounter the kingdom of God, for they will laugh when they encounter the kingdom of God. Happy are those who weep now, for they will laugh. And that in the Greek is a continual future tense verb, mood, which has this continual sense to it. And so it's not just laugh once, but it's laugh all the time. And yeah, sometimes I find that I'm in pain. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with something in my life, but the Bible promises pain might last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I'm telling you, God always turns our M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G into M-O-R-N-I-N-G. And when joy comes in the morning, our morning flees, our, our diseases flee, you know, and we're healed, we're set free, we experience breakthrough, and that's the kingdom of God. God wants to release righteousness in your life. He wants to align you with heaven, and he wants to set you up to experience, to encounter the joy of the Lord, the joy of your salvation. You know that David, when he sinned and he repented and came back to God, he said, God, I can live without anything else, but I can't live without your Holy Spirit, and I cannot live without joy. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And so we release that on you today and just prepare you to receive breakthrough power today in his presence. Yeah, <laughs> take, I, it. I, take it, take it. I, I felt like the Lord wanted to take you on an encounter. And so take a moment wherever you are and just close your eyes. And, um, and I just release upon you right now, as your eyes close the father, and he is so joyful and he is laughing. He goes, come and laugh with me. I am not serious where I look at you and I'm mad at you but when I see you I want you to laugh with me because my laughter and my joy is going to fill you up because without that you cannot see your future without that you cannot understand who I am in my character I am full of joy and you are my child let's laugh together let's celebrate the victory even before you see it I want you to celebrate that victory. So just picture the father God and he is full of joy. He's full of just, you are the apple of his eye. You are his masterpiece. And he says, I call you into a season of joy, but this season will last the rest of your life. Not just for what you see, but for what I can do in empowering you. And now I, I'm healing your body. I'm, my joy is setting you free from every fear, every, every part where your body and your spirit and your soul has not been aligned with my thoughts. I'm taking you now deep into my water, into my presence so that you can encounter where my strength is. It's in joy. So just take it. Wow. <laughs> so just go ahead, open up your eyes. It's good because God gets us into alignment. He gets us where we don't get toppled by the waves of life. We learn to ride the waves 
those of you that surf, I know Dustin surfs, but in that context, that's what God's teaching us to do is to ride the wave. And there's something that's so exhilarating when you ride the waves, when you are taken into a place that's more powerful than what you could do by just paddling your feet. God is taking you beyond what you can do on your own and into the waters of joy. <laughs> yes, come on. So we want to get, we also want to talk about the power that comes from the presence and his presence is fullness of joy. And so when we're residing in that place, in that tube of the wave, experiencing the joy of the Lord, there's power that's released. And in fact, if you've been in a wave, you'll know that the bigger the wave the more powerful it is. And you just, you cannot control that wave. You just ride it. And that's what joy does for us. It, it just, it rides the wave because, you know, there's no way that we can strive enough to release God's power enough to get breakthrough enough for a miracle. The, the miracle comes from partnering with his presence, being a conduit of his presence in joy that releases his power that brings breakthrough. You know, we, uh, we've been doing these home fire parties in Orange County for the last four months, and we've just had some incredible times where we're getting together and we're just rejoicing in God, we're celebrating, we're, we're playing music, that's celebration, and, and it, it's, like, it's a party, it's just a lot of laughter, and the first home fire party that we did four months ago, the host, their, their mom had 80 years old. Uh, was uh, dealing with a uh, fourth stage cancer. She had a tumor in her side that was impinging on her ribs and they were going to have, it was, it was, she was terminal. There was nothing else they could do, but, but the, the, the tumor was causing so much pain in her ribs that they were just going to try to remove four ribs to give her some more comfort before she was going to, going to die. And so they said that she might not even make it through the surgery because of her age. And so we got her to come to the home fire party four months ago and we laughed over her and everybody's like, what, this is crazy. We've never seen this before. And so I explained to them about his presence brings the power and his presence is fullness of joy. So they're like, Oh, okay. So, so we're laughing over her ribs and she's, she hasn't been to church in, 40 years maybe. And, and, you know, she knows about God, but doesn't, hasn't had a recent encounter with God. And she's like, okay, this is interesting. And so we laugh over her and that next week, she went back, she uh, was already scheduled for surgery. They went in and they didn't have to take four ribs because the tumor had shrunk by 50%. They only had to take a partial rib out. And then she came back the next month with, the, with a bunch of her girlfriends who were also around 80 years old. And we laughed over all of them. And then we laughed over her again last month uh, at our home fire party because she was scheduled to go back into the hospital and be rechecked again. Well, we just got word on Monday of this, this week that the CAT scans came back on Monday and she has zero cancer and there's no tumor. She's in perfect health. And the reason why is because the presence of God went in there and obliterated that cancer, made wrong ways right, brought righteousness, aligned heaven and earth inside of her body. And the joy of the Lord is what brought it about. And now she has so much joy because she's going to get to live a longer, fuller like joy-filled life. And so that's the power of joy. That's the power of laughter as we're just releasing it on people. It's it's so crazy, hun. It's to see her face, to see how she was growing the last time and now to get this report. I mean, it's so powerful. I, I know Tanya, who's on right now on our Global Fire Alliance Facebook right now, she's in Colorado and she's in Create Academy. And just last week, or, or 10 days ago, she got, she was on our, our um, great academy, and we were talking about uh, just people's personal projects in that area, and she got this message that her, her, her mother in the hospital, I mean, not the hospital, but at the retirement center, was having a stroke, and that the EMT and the fire people said that her eyes are rolling back in her head, it doesn't look good, 
So she rushed over there, but she heard us praying. So we declared, we declared joy. We declared life into her. When she got there, she saw her mother sitting up, talking to the, the people, the EMT people, sharing and just being herself. And again, there's been no effects and it's a miracle. That's the power of what happens when we partner joy and the presence and we go after impossible situations. And you might have an impossible situation and God is going to touch you today. It's so powerful. Come on. In fact, right now we just release the miracle working presence of God over you right now. We release healing in your body this morning. We, we, we release hope. We release breakthrough in your relationships. We release breakthrough in your mind, in your, in your emotions, and in your body. In fact, right now, there's somebody here with, uh, that's on, I, I'm getting a deviated septum. And, and if you have a deviated septum, we release the presence of God over you. We laugh over you. In fact, put your hand on your nose and just begin to laugh. And uh, I'm telling you, like, you, it might seem a little crazy and it might seem like, well, I don't feel like laughing. Well, you know, laughter is a choice, just like love is a choice, forgiving is a choice, giving is a choice, serving is a choice. Everything we do in the kingdom is done by choice with the grace that God gives us based on the faith we have to launch out. And so even if you don't feel like it, just put your hand on your nose and begin to laugh over yourself. And I guarantee you, God's presence and power is going to show up. Uh, there's also somebody here uh, with an ankle problem, and God wants to heal your ankle uh, this morning. And so do the same thing. Just put your hand over your ankle and begin to laugh over yourself. I give sometimes, I give people prescriptions, and I tell them, listen, I want you to take your vitamin J, your vitamin joy, in the morning, noon, and night. And I want you to laugh in the mirror with yourself for 30 seconds, morning, noon, and night. And to see how things go. And I can't tell you how many testimonies I've gotten back where people say I've, I laughed over myself. And by the second or third day, I was completely healed. I just want to encourage you that the power of God's presence comes through joy, not mourning and weeping, pleading with God to do something. God wants to do something. He wants to help us. We don't have to just declare his presence over your body right now, whatever it is in your body that you have that you need a miracle for. God wants to do that today. You know, um, and, and check it out, like what Kevin's talking about. If there's any words of knowledge there, check it out. I also saw a neck getting healed too. You know, in just, um, a, in just a minute, we're transitioning into, uh, again, a, a Zoom link. And so uh, the coaches are going to put that uh, link in the chat right now. We want to have our coaches not only pray but release joy over you in whatever situation you are in and if you're coming back we're so excited that you're part of this community you will be in the same group that you want and what we do for those of you that are new is like we just want you to grow in a community because like Irene you talked about having this community is everything thank you guys for blowing up the chat too wow. there's so much passion in the chat you guys are loving this we're loving being with you. So again, we're going to start at, again, right after this at 930. And you're going to be able to join this link so that we can talk to you in person. We can yes. We want to connect with you. We want oh, yeah. you to be part of our community. In fact, once again, if you want to keep up with what we're doing, uh, go to our website, globalfirealliance.org and put your email in there and and then we'll give you, we'll send you our monthly newsletter to keep you abreast of what's happening locally and regionally. Like when we go and travel, like we would love for you guys to come and be part of our, our conferences that we do around the world and, yeah. and, and join in us with us face to face. So, and we also just want to throw a shout out to, to those who are financially contributing into our community and helping this thing continue to grow and, and reach the world. So we really appreciate every every partner that we have and financially giving. So thank you guys so much for all of that. And and if, if you have anything going on with your body that needs a miracle breakthrough, join us in our 
Zoom link community revival group meeting time and and we'll we'll take care of that there. And and if this has has touched you in any way of what's happened today, please share this link or invite your friends, oh, wow. invite people that are alone or people that you feel like they don't understand what this revival culture is or they're not involved in a church where they're really thriving and growing. We want to become a bridge into so many people's lives around the world that need to know who Jesus truly is and walk in a supernatural lifestyle in a revolution. We would love to see this explode. And so share this link, share, share this with others, because we believe that God is raising up people around the world and we want you to be a part of it. So our goal in everything we're doing is to cultivate a creative catalytic revival community that expands the kingdom of God outside of the walls and to encourage every church, every individual to walk in their supernatural identity and their supernatural de de a destiny to change the world one encounter at a time. Let's be the solution together and let's do something in this season to create a revivolution. So that God link, bless you all. We love you. That link is posted. Make sure you put that in your browser now. And we do. We just release the presence of God all over you. We'll see you on the other side in the link. Can't wait to see your face and hear what's on your heart and what you enjoyed about today. Blessings, everybody. Woo!